John chapter 17 contains a long prayer from Jesus to the Father. This prayer is often called the high priestly or the great priestly prayer. Why is that? This is because Jesus in this prayer intercedes for others, which is one of the uh, tasks appointed for priests to pray for others. In the case of Jesus and of this particular prayer, Jesus prays for his followers to the Father, asking and saying various different things. I just would like to tease out a couple from what we have just heard in our Gospel. Jesus prays for his followers, but if we pay attention, we see that he doesn't just pray for those immediately around him. He also prays for those who will believe through the word. Jesus is thinking ahead. His disciples will preach the good news and others will come to believe in him. Jesus is praying for them. Which means that really Jesus here is praying to the Father for Christians, for believers of every age, all those who will come to believe through the words of the Apostles. And if he's praying for Christians of every age, in this gospel passage, Jesus is praying for us. It's a beautiful image of Jesus interceding to the Father, praying for us, for each one of us, that we may be one, that we may be with him where he is. So we could do a, a simple exercise, which is on verse 21, where he says, that they may all be one, replace in your mind the they with our names. That Diego, Gay, Colin, Janet may all be one, Father, may they be one in us, as you are in me and I am in you. In this Gospel passage, Jesus prays for us. But he doesn't just pray for us individually, he really prays for the entire body, which is the Church, so that we may all be one. Why is Jesus praying for this oneness, for this unity? If we are one, Jesus says, the world may believe that it was you who sent me. The unity, the oneness of the body of Christ, which is the church, is a sign that Jesus was sent by the Father to redeem the world. In other words, the unity of the body of Christ is a strong witness to Jesus as the Saviour and Redeemer. Jesus prays for each one of us and all of us together that, they, that we may be one because Lonely disciples, a fragmented church, Christians and believers who do their own things are not the strongest possible witness we could present to the world about Jesus. Or even worse, a church that is a war within herself is not going to be a credible witness about Jesus Christ. 
Jesus prays for us. We are held in prayer by Jesus, which is a beautiful, beautiful and encouraging image. We should heed his prayer to the Father and make every effort to be one within his body, which is the church. Oh, Lord,